Good morning. It's great to have you with us today. We're going to have a fantastic morning together. Uh, we're going to start with the children's church. So, Claire, do you know what's going to be going on? Uh, well, I have had a little sneaky peek. Um, and so we have got the lovely Emma Strachan. Um, she has made her way into the carpenter's workshop. Mm. And then... Um, someone we've not seen before, actually. The uh, the lovely Romani is going to be on. Oh, wonderful. I know. I haven't seen her in ages. Yeah. yeah. Miss you, Romani. So yeah, sit back and enjoy. Oh no, we've also we've got a challenger. We've got a new challenger oh, this week. Who is it? Or oh, I think one of the pots. <gasps> mm. Ooh, which one? <laughs> So Sophie does an absolutely brilliant job. I know that Jerry and Mark, you get a lot of stick, but Sophie is pretty good this week. Oh, so look yeah. out for her. <laughs> Enjoy. Hello there, welcome to LCF Kids Workshop. It is lovely to see you. I was just having a look at this boat that Greg started last week. Wow, isn't it looking good? <laughs> oh, Greg, you forgot to screw the end together. Better fix that before we move on. Let's get my screwdriver. Let's just give that a little bit of a fix. No, lovely. I think we're ready to go now. I've been... I've been working on the top of the boat. Do you want to have a look? Oh, wow, look at this. This looks really good, doesn't it? I wonder what it's like to live on a boat. Look, oh, it's looking really good. Actually, that reminds me of a story. Noah, I tell you what, we could go and listen to that story right now. Good morning. I'm really pleased uh, to be able to tell you a story today about a man who really loved God and did his best to um, do as he was told and be obedient to God. And we've got Lulu and Oliver here today. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello to all the boys and girls. OK, so God looked down on the world and he was really sad. He wasn't happy at all. Why? because people began to love themselves more than they loved God. And they became really selfish and unkind. Um, they were fighting and they were violent. Yep, fighting. So God was not happy. But there was one man called Noah. Now Noah was a really good man and he really loved God. And he always did what God asked him to do. So God said he's got a plan and he asked Noah to build an ark. Now an ark is a big boat, a huge boat. Yep, like the size of one and a half football pitches. Yeah, so off to work Noah went in building this huge massive wooden ark. Now all the other people thought he was really stupid. Why on earth would you need an ark when you're on the desert, when you live in the desert? There's no rain, but Noah trusted God and he did as he was told. So he built this large ark and then God also said to him, round up pairs of animals. So every single creature, an animal and bird, you need two of each a pair. So that's what Noah did. So eventually the time came for all the animals and Noah's family, because he had some sons who were married. So they all went onto the boat. I'm gonna go around this way. And off they jumped in two by two. And there were horses and there were, oops, elephants, giraffes, every animal you could possibly imagine were invited in pairs onto the ark. Well, eventually the rain did come and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights solidly. And inside this ark, it wasn't comfortable. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being on a stinky boat for all that time, cramped? Now the animals were lovely, but they probably didn't smell very nice. Imagine all the, the stench on that ark, but, they were safe. 
So it's rather like lockdown at the moment. You know, we can't go out, we can't necessarily see our friends at the moment. We have to stay inside, we can't go and play football with our friends. Um, but the thing is, we're safe. So we need to follow the rules. And that's what Noah and his family did. So eventually, uh, it started to get a little bit sunny. And um, so what he did is he asked um, one of the birds, I think it was a raven, here we go, a raven, he set a raven off, who flew away and then the raven came back. And Noah and his wife thought, well, that must mean there's nowhere for the bird to land. So we're stuck on here a bit longer. So then he sent a dove. And the dove flew off. And then the dove flew back. And he thought, oh no, there's still nowhere to land. So they waited another seven days. So sometimes we have to be patient, don't we? So seven days later, he set the dove off again. So off the dove flew. And this time it flew back with a piece of um, an olive branch. Well, Noah thought to himself and spoke to his family and they worked out that must mean that the wind and the sun must have dried up some land, which meant that they could probably think about um, landing and disembarking, getting off the ark. And even today, we think of um, a dove as a message of peace. And God was so pleased with uh, Noah and his family because they did what they were told. They trusted God. They trusted his plan and um, they kept, God kept them safe. And as a little gift, God said, you know, I'm really pleased. And I'm really happy with you guys. So therefore, um, I'm never going to flood the earth again. Um, and he sent them a rainbow. A beautiful rainbow with all the different colours. So even today, when the sun shines, um, quite often we'll have a, a rainbow in the sun, in the sky. Are you awake? Are you still listening? Good. OK, so that's a lovely story um, for us to remember that God loves us so much and will always keep us safe. Bye for now. Say bye-bye. Bye. See you soon. Oh, wasn't that a really good story? It's so nice to hear of God's promises to us. And wasn't Noah amazing to be building a big boat even though there was no rain or water around? And he did it because he trusted God. And all those people that took, took, made fun of him and, made, and thought he was silly, you know, God knew that he would keep Noah and his family safe. And he also gave us this amazing rainbow of all these beautiful colours. This is God's promise to not just to Noah, but to us as well, to keep us safe and that we know that God loves us and wants the best for us. So now we're going to listen to a prayer from one of our children. And it's good to see you, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Dear God, we love you. You are super cool. We thank you for the sun and rain. We thank you for the birds that praise. We are so glad that you're our dad. You pick us up when we feel bad. Dear God, we love you. You are super cool. Amen. Having a laugh with Jerry and Mark. Hi everyone. Yes, it's me. Jerry's here. Another week of jokes. Yeah. I thought. I thought before I started, I might just share a couple of. I'm getting a lot of mail. Obviously, you know, loads, loads of letters thanking me for my jokes, saying how good they are. You know, just well done. Keep going. Oh, you know, it's lovely to hear these things. I thought. I thought I might share a few. Just randomly, randomly selected letters. Thought you might want to hear. Yeah. Oh, I wish, which one should we start with? Start this one. I just want to say, what does this one say? It's just randomly pilled out, of course. Yeah. Dear Jerry, your jokes are the best. <laughs> oh, love mum. 
Oh well, you know, everyone's a, everyone's got a number one fan. Thanks, Mum. Should we have another one? See what another one is. Uh, dear Jerry, uh, we think your jokes are the best, much better than Mark's. <laughs> Come on, goes without saying. Uh, why does Mark make them so confusing and hard to follow? <laughs> right, you'd have to ask him. Yeah. Yours faithfully, Claire and Vic. <laughs> there we are. Well, that's interesting. Uh, should I have one more? Should we have one more? Dear, oh, it's terrible handwriting. Dear Jerry, I think your jokes are quite terrible. What? Terrible? Well, just being honest, I'm just showing you the jokes, you know, showing you the letters, quite fair. Well, I get some good ones, I get some bad ones. Uh, in fact, there's only one thing I can think of that is even worse. Hmm, what's that then? Mike's sermons? What? Worse than my jokes? Oh, dear. Well, that's a bit of a nasty letter. Kind regards, Becky. Mm, well, not quite sure where, that, where that's going to go. Hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> on, on to this week's joke. Would you like to hear my joke this week? Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. Might be a bit old, but you know, I think it's good. It's got, got, some, got some good miles in it still. Okay. How do you, how do you become a squirrel's best friend? How do you become a squirrel's best friend? <laughs> oh dear. You climb up a tree and act like a nut. <laughs> you climb up a tree and act like a nut. Oh, you like that one? That was good. Yeah, I'm going to get some votes, I think, this week. I'm going to get some votes. Certainly going to get some more letters. OK, see you guys. See you next week. Hey, guys, here we are again. Uh, another golf joke. Um, you might have been wondering why uh, I've, uh, I've mentioned Ian in a couple of jokes. Well, Jerry and I have been noticing the comments coming when we've been doing our jokes, you see. So uh, we, we just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, people like Pastor Mike and Greg, you know, just watch out. You know, if those comments keep coming. Uh, anyway, last golf joke for November. How many golfers does it take to change a light bulb? Four! Vote for Mark. Will you remember, will you remember me in a day? Yes. A week? Yes. A year? Yes. A month? Yes. Knock, knock. Who's there? You don't remember me. Read that, Mark and Jerry. Whose was your favourite joke? Was it Jerry's? Was it Mark's? Or was it this week's challenger? Have a vote in the comments below. And if you would like to have a go at a joke off with Jerry and Mark, then let us know in LCF Kids. Having a laugh with Jerry and Mark. <laughs>
Welcome back, church. Wasn't that fantastic? That kids team just do such a great job. Um, and I know uh, we don't often see everything because on the Facebook um, channel, there's often other things going out. So I know, Liz, you've got a favourite, haven't you? I love Thursdays where they do the action songs. And Ashley Campbell, you are just amazing. Thank you for putting that time and effort in. I would really encourage you to go and watch um, it on Thursdays. It's just brilliant. Yeah, he really is great. But there's loads of other great content content going out on our Facebook as well. So do check it out. We're going to move into um, a youth time now and, uh, you know, Sasha and Luke doing such a great job. And who are we hearing from? Who's our Bible verse this week? Lisa. 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 Yeah. yeah, I love Lisa. Yeah, so sit back and enjoy this next section. I always do and uh, I particularly enjoy the challenges. The Bible speaks to each one of us in different ways, so we got some of our young people to share their favourite scriptures and verses. Here's one of our young people sharing their favourite verse for you today. My favourite verse comes from Romans 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. The first four words is be joyful in hope. And to me, this is being content in what you have and being hopeful for the future, being able to think about all the joyous things and know that with God, you can do these things. Being patient in affliction is being able to be patient to everything that may conflict you in any way, but knowing that with God, you can surpass these things and go past anyone who sins against you. And being faithful in prayer is just being able to put all your trust in God, knowing that He can help you through any of these moments. I love the way that this verse is put out, as it has two commas, making it a perfect rule of three, which is great to be memorable and just keep it in your head wherever you go. This helps if you're feeling down, if you're feeling happy, if you're feeling scared, or if you're feeling angry, just knowing that you have this little verse in your pocket that has all of the basic things that you need to know about your prayer life. This is a great thing that has really helped me when I'm praying, knowing that I should be joyful in my dreams, and I should be patient with the people who may have wronged me or what I have done wrong, and I need to be faithful in my goals and my prayers for life. 